Good morning, everyone. I hope you had a good weekend. It feels like the first day of fall for us here in Florida. Yay. It's nice. The windows are open. It's amazing. Uh, I got my winter, <laughs> winter boots on. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I got pants on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess that's How was good to have pants on? <laughs> Oh, there you go. At least, at least we know you got pants yeah, on. Yeah, right? um, <laughs> I'm flying up to Buffalo next weekend, and I open up the, the um, just I'm gonna bring my mom down for a month, and uh, so I got the flannel shirts on. I can't wait to put my flannel shirt on. So, um, <laughs> and you know, I think tomorrow the high is seventy, so it's gonna be really nice. It's yeah, yeah it's gonna be like like the lows fifty four, I believe. Wonderful tonight so, and tomorrow. Anyways, thanks for those of you joining us. I'm recording this, obviously, it's the 16th, right, of, uh, of October already, halfway through October. And uh, for those who joined us on Saturday morning at the, at the uh, Collaboration Cafe class, thank you. Um, it has a lot, most of, oh, I think all that information was forwarded to your email. And it was a great class that Michelle put on. And uh, she's going to follow up with another one the second Saturday in November. And I believe, Sean, you're going to be doing the Listing the Leads class in December, correct? Correct. Yep. Wonderful. December. Good. Because what we, what do we need? We need leads. We need the more leads we have, the more opportunities we have. Um, you know, I get inundated. I'm sure you do as well by either title companies or lenders or whomever who want our business. And I always ask them for one thing in return: provide a lead. You know, help us, help our team grow, get some leads out there, however they are, however we can get them, and um, and we'll be glad to reciprocate the business. So, um, anyways, Karen, you want to share what you heard this morning on Taylor Morrison? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was watching, um, uh, we watched the financials in the morning, um, Market Watch, and they had the CEO of Taylor Morrison on, uh, just kind of talking about the market in itself and the new construction where they're building. Um, obviously, we all know, like, there's only certain pockets now of new construction that's coming up because you need land. Um and the CEO was saying, which I found extremely interesting, because obviously they have <laughs> they have the tools and the data to analyze. Obviously, we do, but they have they analyze the entire United States. The average age currently of listings on the market, how old do you think they are? Let's guess. 60. Okay. Anyone else? I would say 45 to 60. Okay. Yeah. The age, the age of the homes. Anyone else? I'd say 30 days. Not days, but how old? Oh, old. What's the uh, average age of the current listings? Like, let's take all the listings in the United States, average them out. What is their age? Oh, I didn't understand the question. I'm sorry. 35. 35 yeah. to 40. Yeah. Well, Sean, spot on. 40 years old. The average age of the listing is 40 years old. And know why Taylor Morris is telling us that? Because no one's buying those homes. They're buying new construction. Mm. They're relocating to the areas where there's new construction um, if they're not in an area where it is, or mm. they want a home that's updated. And I know with for a fact with my listing in Tampa that's not updated, where I'm competing with new construction townhomes on the same street because they're, you know, they're they're tearing down the older, you know, homes that were there, the 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 developers are and they're building townhomes. And that's what I'm competing with. So I it's hard because it's not even about the price point and also affordability. Um and, and we'll have Sean talk after this, but you know, there there's there I know I heard on the news this morning also rates are, are gonna go up again. Maybe, is that what I heard? I don't know, we'll have Sean chime in. But the fact remains that homes, we have an affordability crisis in the, in the United States. The CEO was also talking about 231 two, buy downs. Um, so if a CEO of a new construction company is talking about 231 buy downs, then we better be having those conversations with our sellers also. Sean? Yeah, they. so I had two deals that I've lost. Um, and really nothing I can do to builders. Reason being, what the builders are doing now, and what Karen just said, three, two, one, buy down, that's one option. Uh, two, one, buy down, that's two, you know, so you're basically getting in at either 3% lower than the going rate, or you're getting in at 2% lower. Than it. That's one option. The other option is buy, uh, builders are basically, you know how they'll give incentives, right, to use their mortgage company, and I can't 
compete with that when they're given $25,000 away. And so what they're doing, instead of giving them $25,000, you know, really towards any kind of upgrades or anything, they're just buying down their rate. They're using 25, I, the one that just closed, they did $22,000 in buy down. So they bought their rate down into the sixes, which when you do a permanent buy down, not a temporary, because the temporary buy downs are the two one buy downs, the three two one buy downs. The permanent buy down, you qualify <clears throat> off of the lower rate, right? So it, oh. it makes you easy. It's, it's easier for you to qualify. Three two one, two one buy downs, those are temporary. You qualify off the full rate, okay? So the builders are, have gotten smart. And, and instead of just saying, all right, well, we'll give you some upgrades in your house, we're going to buy your rate down by at least two percentage points because they can. And then you can qualify for this, you know, more house because of the affordability issue. So they're getting smart with that. And we can't compete on the mortgage side with that. There's nothing we can do about that. But you as realtors, can just basically do the same thing. And what I would say is instead of lowering prices, instead of doing anything like that, throw out there that one, you'll either do a permanent buy down, figure out the math on it, right? And then, or or do a temporary buy down and become like a builder. And But in doing all this, and, and I'm being selfish with this, you need to tell them what lender they have to use to do this, right? Right. You, the builders can do it. You can absolutely do it. Say, look, we will give you $20,000, not just towards closing costs. And don't even say closing costs, okay? Because everybody thinks closing costs, closing, say, we'll give you $25,000 or whatever the number is to make your rate, a, you know, you, you can even throw out two percentage points lower than the going rate, three percent, you know, whatever. Just get with me. I'll give you the math on it. And all of a sudden your house becomes like, you know, like a builder, you know, and, and you have more attraction, put that out on MLS, put it out everywhere. So Sean, talk to us about a permanent buy down, because I don't think we've ever discussed that. Have we? Uh, yeah. So is this something new? Down. Yeah, no, it's always been there. It's just, it's paying points. Okay. So right now, the way our lending environment, the, the guidelines are, if you buy a house, you can only pay three points max, okay? If you're the buyer, it used to be you can say, well, you know what? I'll buy down the rate as low as I want. <laughs> nope, can't do that anymore with, with Dodd-Frank and all that. So just on the buyer side, you can pay three points max. And that includes origination, underwriting, okay? Well, on the other side, the seller can pay whatever all the way up to you know whatever the guideline is for that program. So when you pay points, okay, points, not closing costs, points, you then look at the rate sheet and you say, well, if I have $20,000 to give, I can buy that rate down to whatever that rate is because it changes every day and that's permanent. So that so when you get in, your rate is permanently, let's say you can buy it down to six and a half percent. That's permanent for the, the life of the loan. Okay, it never changes. And you qualify on six and a half percent. Temporary buy downs are not points, right? They're closing costs to buy the rate down, either a two-one buy down, okay, means that. Let's say today the the going rate on a 30 is seven and a half percent. Okay. Well, a two one buy down means in year in the first year, your interest rate is two percent lower. So it's six and a half or five and a half, right? Second year, it's one percent lower. So it's six and a half. Third year, all the way through year 30, it's the going rate, seven and a half. That's temporary, right? So and it's only bought down for the the two years, okay? Then it goes to the fully index rate. Same with a three, three, two, one's just three points, okay? And it's more expensive. So the difference is in the permanent, that rate is always like that. And the temporary buy downs, you only, you have to qualify on the fully index rate, whatever that market rate is today. 
So there's a big difference in your qualifications. So the affordability is so much better with a permanent buy down. Just think permanent buy down points, permanent buy down points. Mm -hmm. You're paying however many points to get that rate down lower and it stays at that rate forever until you refinance or whatever. Right. Hey, Sean, does, the, um, does it matter what the buyer's credibility is with this or is this because once they are approved for a loan, then it would be up to the seller to basically credit the buyer at X amount of closing to buy down the rate. Yeah. So it's, it's based on the program too. Okay. So FHA, 6% is the maximum that the seller can pay in any type of closing cost, right? So, and conventional, <clears throat> under 10% down, conventional is 3%. That's it, 3%. If they're putting more than 10% down, then it can be 6%. And then VA, it's 4%. But if VA is paying direct points to buy the rate down, then there's no there is no limit, okay? So it depends on the program. It depends on the borrower. Obviously, the borrower's credit is suspect and they're going FHA. So, But FHA is very liberal. It's 6%. I mean, that's a big number, right? You're, you're talking about a big number to buy buy down the rate. What's but the you, And you can do a combination if you want. Let's say you have 20000 to play with. Use 10000 of it to buy down the rate. And then use the other ten thousand just to pay the closing costs. So what is what what is the um, FHA loan limit? Right now it's four hundred seventy two. Okay, that's going to change. Well, I don't know if you all saw that the Fannie Mae is coming out with a proposed change for next year of seven hundred fifty thousand. Right of that's the conforming limit. All right, that's not set in stone, but some lenders are are. I was going to do a video on that today. Some lenders are taking that. We don't really have as much, you know, uh, there's not a lot of jumbo loans out there actually. Yeah. So, so so FHA usually follows suit. So I would imagine that FHA is going to probably go to 490, <laughs> you know, for 2024, but right now it's 472 is our the rate in our area. Okay. Um, okay, so Sean, maybe you can help us get, you know, maybe we should put some verbiage in the public remarks, you know, maybe absolutely, should, maybe it should be the first line that the uh, buyers are reading, sellers willing to buy down rate, you know, whatever, I think we need to do yep. it properly with, you know, I, I don't know what the exact verbiage should be. But uh, I think step one is let's get with our sellers today saying, hey, would you be willing to to buy down a buyer's rate? if they came in at full price or whatever it might be. Why wouldn't they? I've got one up in Gulf Harbors at 650. I know they need to sell, okay? Well, three points of the 650 is what? 18, 19, 20 grand, something like that. If somebody came in at 630 tomorrow, I know they would take it. So I think step one is, and please, I like everybody's opinion, get with the seller. Would you will be willing to do this? And then step two, let's change the, um, the public remarks. That's the first sentence in there, right? What do you think? Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. How do you know how many, how many, how do you quantify a point? How many thousands is that? One yeah. point. Yeah. It's one point is 1% of the loan amount. Okay. okay. So $500,000 loan, one point's $5,000, two points, $10,000. So this is important. There's, the market changes every day and throughout the day, right? So on every interest rate, okay, so you got, let's say, seven and a half, seven point seven five, seven point eight seven. You got eighths of a point for every rate is a corresponding cost, okay? it. So if you want to get seven and a half, it's going to cost you one point today. Tomorrow, that seven and a half may be one and a half points. So at every rate, it's a cost. So what I would say is when you come up with the number with your seller, when you say, look, we want to use this as a way to sell the house. Just say say the numbers, right? Say we're going to give $25,000 or whatever to, to buy down. And you may want to say, buy down the rate 
because towards closing costs, everybody hears that, right? They're like, okay, great. To buy down the rate or put in the verbiage because you know a worst case scenario, two points, okay? Or, you know, or, or basically a two one buy down is probably your, your, you know, your worst case or three one buy down. We can run the numbers on that. And then you get a you get a lump sum number, whatever that is, and you can either use it as one, a temporary buy down, or as a permanent buy down. You evaluate it at every where whenever that day is, you evaluate what's better for the buyer. If it, the loan officer has any clue, they're gonna know either we're gonna go with permanent buy down because we need to qualify the, the buyer at this lower rate or we can't qualify you know so but one percentage point or one point is one percent so you just go from there whatever you know two percent three percent four percent so sean do you not want i mean should you just put in the you know seller willing to permanently buy down buyer's interest rate yep and, and not put an amount in there and then maybe well, you, yeah, that's you perfect and, wording. I think that's really good wording, Karen. Yeah, you you can do that, or you can you can just kind of use the two one buy down as a as kind of like a you know basis. You can say, however, that permanently, how, but a yeah, two one's permanent, right? No, two one's not permanent, but it gives you a number, you know, like a math a number to use. Okay, so you know you're you can unless you want to say because if you if you're gonna say like eight or nine, ten thousand dollars, you're really not going to get much of a buy down. Oh, and that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, okay, raise your hand if you have a listing that is not selling that may be able to put this in affordability for people to be approved at a, at a lower interest rate. Look at all of us. So Sean, let's try and maybe we can come up with verbiage all of us can put in our listings and and just say you have to use mortgages by Sean, you know? Well and you can and you you can say this just like what the builders do you have to talk to me because to, one thing is you don't want to say all this right and then have your seller agree Not. to it mm -hmm. and then it fall through and then you really look bad because you could have lowered the price maybe so yeah and they don't have to i don't you don't necessarily have to say you have to use sean i mean you have to be approved by sean or because if they can get a better deal somewhere else, they're they have to be able to do that. Sure. The builders are a little different; they're captive. I mean, we can't totally be like the builders, but we can at least say, in order to qualify for this, you know, buy down of your rate, you have to be approved with with Sean. And I'll do; I'll run the approval. If they get a better deal, I lose, but you okay, still so win. We're gonna have to come up with some verbiage because I know that my seller is considering a three to one buy down. That's twenty five thousand dollars. I'd rather yep. do permanent because someone can't afford this. My <laughs> this townhouse that I have for five hundred and sixty five thousand. You you it's it's like a fifty five hundred a month payment. Yeah, I mean that's a lot. And a two one buy down or three two one what buy you, down. What is, what is, is that good. townhouse? Uh, what do you think it would appraise at? Oh, I don't think I'm going to have a problem appraising it. I mean, there's townhomes nearby us that are selling for 900000 okay. right. The problem is no one can afford it <laughs> and it's not updated. Huh. It, it's, it's, it's updated to, you know, 1990, like maybe 2005 standard, you know? Right. Yeah. Hey, Ed, when I walked into that townhome with Karen, I couldn't believe it was only 550 Yeah. I just, you know, if that was... In Palm Harbor, it, it'd probably be more, but it was right on Lois in Tampa, a great area. It's like a, I, I was shocked that it was only 550 and, and getting no looks. What was interesting was when she told me that the other units in the area are selling for 900, I'm thinking, well, maybe you should raise the price. You know, maybe people are thinking it's too cheap and we'll get more interest if it's higher. Um, so <clears throat> Mike Toro had a buyer looking in Ocala and it's so funny when I, I was talking to Mike about it. Lenar emailed us and they're exactly what you said, Sean, they're offering 4.75, but that's because instead of giving incentives or, or upgrades in the home, they're just basically buying down the rate for them. So go ahead, Chris. It's a quick comment, a, kind of a twist on <clears throat> what you were talking about, Karen, as far as having listings that aren't moving is that I'm sure we all have buyers. I know I do that are sitting on the sidelines right now because of the rate 
uh, environment. I think it would be, you know, I don't know whether it's an email blast because there's lots of agents out there that would love to have, you know, a reason to call their buyers and say, hey, here's a great house in Palm Harbor or wherever um, that's updated and ready to go. And the seller is willing to permanently buy down the rate. Because That's a huge reason why I think people are hesitant because they all think, right, that rates are coming down. We'll just wait out the rate environment. That may or may not be the case. Um, and unless they have an extreme sense of urgency, that's what they're doing. Yeah. So that's, I think, what's really hurting us all. But that could be a great marketing tool to put that on some type of flyer or something like that. Looking for a great house. I have one. My seller's willing to, you know, deal and 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 permanently buy down your rate. And, and Chris, think about this too. Tell me that whatever the price point is, I don't care if it's 150 to a million, that any of your sellers would would not do this if they, if somebody came in at a full price would they not credit back the buyer three percent sellers are sellers are still sitting on a lot of equity and you know the reason why we don't have more inventory we all know is because the the rates out there i mean we've all seen the statistics it's between two and a half and four and a half well no one's trading that rate for a seven and a half eight soon to be eight percent rate if they want to move so we're still in that you know crazy market where there's not enough to to sell but then what is there isn't selling because the buyers are all going well i'm going to wait out this rate um craziness so right. I, I think it's a great way because i just got a uh an email from because i sold a couple in our homes they have a hundred homes they're often a five thousand dollar bonus three percent for the buyer they're trying to get rid of by the end of november so they have inventory that they want to push and same reason why our prices got jacked. One of the reasons, because these huge institutional buyers around the country are spending billions of dollars buying single family homes. I mean, their goal at BlackRock is to own, they're going to own 60% of all the single family homes in the country. That's their goal by 2030 or whatever it is. I just read mm -hmm. uh, that's, they have more money, just like the builders have a ton of money. Well, you got to, convince your seller that, look, this is the environment that you are competing in. And either you play the game and entice a buyer to come, or you're not going to get out of your house. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead, Colleen. Is this something that we can write in our offers to a seller when sure. we write up an offer, say, Absolutely. is the seller willing to do a buy down? To. Yeah. It has to be in the agreement and it has to be, or it has to be in the offer and it has to be up front. You Even can't... if the seller's not offering it, Sure, it'd be, it'd be right no different yes. than asking for Absolutely. concessions from a seller. Sure. Yes. Okay. Sean, is there any way that that should properly be written in the additional terms? You do, in the contract, you, you don't have to, you can say, you know, seller will pay X amount towards buyer's closing costs, prepays, and escrows because closing cost points are closing costs, right? So it, for the for the marketing of it, it's different. You know, for the marketing of it, you want to put it out there, not closing costs. For the marketing of it, you want to say buy down your rate. You want you want to directly have your wording point to rate because that's going to attract buyers. Because you know the rates are scaring people off. I mean, especially now we're we're touching eight percent. I mean. Nobody thought that would happen. So in the contract, you could, you just put it the same way, though. Closing costs, prepays, and escrows. Right. Um, yeah. Terry, did you have a comment? I know you have your hand up. Yeah. Go uh, ahead, my friend. <clears throat> Sean, there used to be a, a, a mortgage where if the rate fluctuated, that particular mortgage gave you the option of refinancing with little or no closing costs. Is there something like that still available? No, they don't. There, there isn't anything built in because in our, the way our market works today is when your mortgage, when you close on your house, your mortgage is sold everybody, no matter what lender it is, the servicing rights are sold. So there's nothing that they're going to do to automatically refinance you. So the lenders just know that everybody that's buying today is going to refinance in a few years. And so, yeah, there's nothing that, that is built in. Like I, I did a, a video a couple of weeks ago about how PMI automatically drops off at certain dates. They don't do that for rates, right? They don't say, 
once the market rate gets to a certain or, or the market gets to a certain level that your rate will automatically but you know go down so that they don't have anything like that there's something called a graduate payment graduated payment mortgage that is an you know back in the day was very very popular that's similar but it's not and i i'm actually there no lenders are off there's only a couple out there so i'm going to be looking into that but there's really nothing that automatically reduces the rate got it okay. um Thank well i'm thinking of it sean how about va loans is, is a veteran a va loan eligible for a buy down as well <laughs> absolutely every every loan is okay, okay every so loan conventional fha va they all have buy down they have the opportunity up front for the buy down okay and is there a like remind me again is there a max that the seller can buy down a buyer's rate depends on the program like I said fha six percent conventional three to six percent va four to unlimited depending on how you how you put it in the contract well i think the it, the um step one is get with the sellers asking them if they would be willing to do it and then step two, if they are, it's the first sentence in the public remarks that seller willing to buy down buyer's interest rate. What do you got to lose? I think I think people are willing to buy. I think this, the rate scares them. And I just posted in the chat, there was an article this morning in Florida Realtors of why sellers are not selling. And you know, this is, you know, part of the reason sellers aren't selling is because they're they they were stuck with that, you know, three percent rate and they don't want to buy at seven or eight. Well, it can be reversed on them as well when they buy to do the buy down. Okay, um, so like Ed would tell us, we got to figure out what their problem is and 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 have and solve one of their problems. Well, look at that list of things in that article, you know, after the uh, the Zoom here, and and see what problems that you can resolve for that seller to get them to list, and then they become a buyer as well. So, um, I'm yapping too much. Anybody have any other comments? Sherry, I'd love your opinion. Go ahead, Jim on. Sure. Uh, Sean just said it just a couple of uh, minutes ago. He said, uh, buyer has an opportunity to buy down rates. Seller. Mm -hmm. You know, the buyer, uh, yeah. Buyer. Yeah, the buyer has buyer. an opportunity to, to do the, you know, to buy down the rates. That's what you would put in your remark is real simple. No, the seller is giving a discount or is, is willing to buy down the rate for the buyer. So yeah, the, the, buyer's buyer, not, the buyer's not buying down their own rate. The they seller can, give but them a credit. yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right, I see. Think, I think maybe okay. it would be, you know, seller, seller incentive. Seller, 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 incentive. seller is open or seller will consider a permanent buy down of buyer's interest rate. Maybe that. I don't know. And put a number on it. Put a number on it. Because... Well, willing to incentivize buyer via rate discount. Sean, do you when you so say Sean, uh, a, a specific number, are you talking dollar amount or interest rate? No, you can't put interest dollar rate. Amount. Dollar amount, yeah. Um, okay. Or you can say, rate. like for the the two, the three, let's say that your um your seller, because this can be changed during the contract too. It, you you can use as an example for your number to put on MLS a three to one buy down. So you put in your your MLS comments. Seller is offering an interest rate three percentage points lower than the going market. That's a three to one buy down, right? Now once we're in the transaction, if the buyer to qualify needs a lower rate, then you use that buy down number, right? To just buy down the rate. Because once you're in the contract, you're under contract, you can change from a three, two, one buy down, a two, one buy down to a permanent buy down, whatever works for the buyer. Okay. So, but to market it, use the three, two, one number, because that's the biggest number. That's going to be the biggest number, most likely. You're and not Sean, gonna... the sellers are going to know what that number is because it's yes. three percentage well, point three percent of the selling price. Well, we're gonna, yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come up with a, a lump sum number based on a three to one buy down today. Okay. Rates change every day, but we're gonna hedge it a little bit by giving it some cushion, right? In case rates go up a little bit, and you know, because if they go down, then it doesn't matter, you know, then then the number can is even more powerful if the rates go down but it 
but if you put a, a three to one maximum ceiling on it and we put a little cushion in there just in case rates go up a little bit, you're good. Then then you know that's your that's your maximum exposure out of pocket. However, the buyer decides to use that twenty five thousand dollars, it's up to them, mm -hmm. right? But you're offering it. But and then when you put in the MLS <laughs> comments, you're saying three percent. You're you're saying a number of three. So everybody's like, whoa, three percent lower. I mean, yeah, that's that's in the fours, right? So that's a no-brainer. You can't, you really can't put it. You I guess you could if you were, you, you know, could, you, but you'd have to risk, you know, your just risk, like, right? Know what they're gonna pay, right? Yeah, you you could put a rate, but you would get yeah, I didn't slapped. mean the rate. I meant the I, I want to make sure the sellers know. Like let's take a, a real life example. If it's a five hundred thousand dollar property. The three to one buy down is going to cost the seller fifteen grand. So, Sean, right? you Sean, on what will depend on it depends on on the what I do is I run all my scenarios on a ninety five percent. Okay, I do ninety five percent, so that's worst case scenario. You know, with with any lending, you know, so I I do it off of that because it all depends on the loan amount. You know what? How much the three to one is going to be? Okay. So I just want to I just want to make sure we tell our sellers. Look at if we offer this to the buyers, you're out of pocket. You're going to be the sale price less fifteen grand, twenty grand. Yeah. Because that's what they want to know. How much? Just let me. Just let me do the math for you. Don't even try to do it. Don't think okay. you can do it because you can't. Because okay. it gets complicated. Because rates change every day. So just. Tell, let me do the math. I'll put the cushion in there for you. And then you bring it to the seller and say, are you willing to do this? If you're not, okay, well then we'll maybe do look at a two one buy down and then just do the math off of that because we can't guarantee what's going to happen in the future with rates, but we're pretty sure we're in, we're in a narrow range now. Okay. We're, we're between seven and a half and eight, I think for the next few months. All right. If something bad happens, if you know, we keep seeing these these number these reports coming out, you know, just think that that's going to continue for the next few months. So rates aren't going to dip down into the low sevens. It's not happening. Go ahead, Karen. Um, Sean, Sean did this example for me on my townhouse. It was five hundred and sixty-five thousand, and a three-two-one buy down ended up being around twenty-five thousand dollars. Right. And, and that was on a 565 and, price point. And, and that's a 5% down. Yeah, yeah that's, and I think, Sean, yeah. the two one was about 15,000. Right, right. So, so you, you guys, calculate the worst case scenario. I have a suggestion. I'm going to see if you guys think this would work okay. to be to be general because I, I'm listening to this conversation and some, some points, at, some parts of it just go over my head. As much as I understand real estate, mortgage, I don't get, right? Yeah, yeah. You, so you don't have to. When yeah. you're putting in, a, I, I get that, Sean, but when people are reading remarks, you want to make it, you want to put those remarks in a crystal clear way that even somebody like me who knows real estate but not mortgage would understand. And especially a buyer who knows nothing about any of it would understand, right? So I'm thinking, the wording could be seller offering to pay. I'm going to use 25,000 as the hypothetical seller offering to pay 25,000 toward points to reduce buyer interest rate. That covers all of the bases that you just talked about. You don't have to be specific about three, two, one. You don't have to be specific about how much that's going to reduce it. Just you're, you're giving a dollar amount that's going to ring bells to them. And you're and you're saying the words reduce buyer interest rate, and that's going to be a trigger for them. And you you oh, can kind of yeah you can add to that a little bit saying three when you say that up to and throw that on, on the end up to three percentage points lower than going market rate. Right, that's cool. Okay. Up hey Michelle, say that again. I I think okay. listen, guys maybe we should have Sean. Sean I'm going to be in the office at ten. Uh, or 10 30 let's let's oh you might not be in the office. i'm gonna type it into the chat 
Right. Let's yeah. get some verbiage and send it out to the group that we can all I'll, use because all right. I know there's a lot of us that that have listings that are just sitting. I, you know what? I agree completely with Michelle saying that that sentence in, in the public remarks has got to be really, really clear. And Michelle, the only thing I would tweak on what you said is that twenty five thousand number you put in there is was a hard number, and if it's a four hundred thousand dollar home, it may not. It, you know, there may, may not need it. Yeah, and, and here's here's why I say that there'll be buyers who are, will be expecting that twenty five grand, even though they're, the closing costs aren't twenty five thousand. And then after the closing, they're saying, "Hey, the seller still owes me forty two hundred bucks. Where's my check?" All right, so yeah, the state seller willing to pay points up to up to up to I think is the number. Yeah, well, and you don't even need to right. put let's a number. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just say, uh, you know, you want to kind of say the percentage points lower than going market rate you don't have to say twenty five thousand or you could say sell you know seller willing to pay down interest rate up to three percentage points lower than going rate yeah but we don't know what that number yeah is put there. it in the chat tell me well, if that we'll we'll have that figured out so that so the seller will know you'll know what that maximum ceiling is okay but, because you, know, you don't if, think rates are going to change. So we should, like, if I put that verbiage in, I should be safe for a couple months. You should be safe. That's why I would do like, I would put a cushion in on top of that just to make yeah. sure. I mean, if rates went to 9%, we'd all have to delete that out of our MLS immediately, you know, but yeah, um, you, yeah we're kind of hedging that we're, we're in a, in a rate environment where we're probably at the ceiling now, right? You know, it shouldn't be significantly more, but it could go up a little more. So I, I think to, I just want to say one more thing. Um, I think it's imperative when you're having this conversation with your seller, get them to understand that not doing this, their house is, is affordable to, you know, to this type of person or uh, yep. I don't mean type of person. That's well, it's opening it up to more people. That's for sure. I yeah. think, yeah. Like, yeah, like you need to show them, like when I did my analysis with my seller, I said, if you do this, the consumer is in a sense purchasing your home at four hundred thousand dollars because that's what brings their rate down, you know, to the current, in, you know, to to you yep. know, based on the current interest rate. If you keep it as it is, it's five sixty five. But if you give them three points, now your home's were mm -hmm. is is a four hundred thousand dollars sale price to them. Yeah. Did you understand? Am I saying that right? Do you understand? What I'm yeah, you're right. You're, yeah, uh, so absolutely. It's, it's all about the affordability. Yeah, I think it's imperative to do those numbers with Sean and then go present to your seller. Hmm. Okay. So what would that take, Sean, from us? Do, do you just need a price range of, of the home? I just need a, yeah, I need a price. And I'm going to run the scenario just on the minimum down, 5% down. If it's FHA, it's 3.5% down. So I'm just going to run it on the minimum. That means you got the biggest loan amount, which means you got the biggest contribution. So- yeah. If somebody comes in and they're putting twenty percent down, then your your out of pocket number is going to be significantly less, but you're still going to buy their rate down by three percent, right? It's just going to be less. Mm -hmm. Got it. Good. Excellent. Well, and they, and really getting you know must be qualified for, uh, with seller's preferred lender, and maybe that's we, that's maybe the perfect we... language because that's what the builders use: preferred lender, quote unquote. They don't say our lender. And, they say yeah. preferred lender. And yeah. and I think I think the other thing is to if if we are going down this route, like for me personally, I am going to have that verbiage on a status change sheet or or uh, addition to listing whatever the change to the listing agreement and have your seller sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And so let's come up with a, a, a sentence on the proper verbiage to make it crystal clear what the what the seller is willing to do in the buy down and then also. I think it should be added with with seller's preferred lender. Mm -hmm. And so you guys know also, and this is future stuff, because I don't know that I've been kind of following the status of these lawsuits going on with, you know, with NAR and all this stuff. And, and so in the future, this is going to have to happen 100% of the time, because you're going to have buyers who now have to pay in addition to closing costs and their down payment, the commission. Right. We're going to have to get creative in that if no longer if we can no longer have the sellers paying both sides of the commission, you better start getting creative on having still 
the seller paying it, right? But incentivizing them by rate because you know the the buyer's going to they're going to have to pay some of this commission now going forward. I don't know when you the maybe lawsuit you could, starts today. I don't know. Yeah, if so yeah, it starts. The today. world's going to change with this. What starts today? The trial. Oh, the trial starts today. It's a um, good idea, Sean, just to be prepared for it. So um, that's yeah. another class, right? Yeah. And while I'm while we're on this subject, um, October nineteenth. If if you value your commission, <laughs> you know, I don't take a buyer broker agreement, but I'm going to this class. I've been in the business 25 years. I'm going to this class. Uh, you know, our, our Florida broker is offering October 19th, this class, uh, how to present a buyer broker uh, agreement. I think it's imperative you go if you are a buyer's agent and you want to protect your commissions. You're going to have to have it on every transaction once this changes. Where is that class going to be, Karen? It's, it's in the in world. The, right? In the, in in the, the world? E, yeah, in, it's in our uh, cloud office uh, in the um, uh, Florida auditorium. I'll send it out to everybody via email. The information. And, you know, if you guys want, you know, we can meet at the office too and put it on in the conference room on the thing if, if you want to get together. And yeah, do let's it. do that. Yeah, for those you know, who are local, let's do that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll push something out. Right, Colleen, you're next. Somebody sent me something that Remax. Caldwell Banker, and I forget which other brokerage, they left NAR because it's of this. The anywhere, it's Anywhere brand, which is Sotheby's, um, I think ERA, right, John? Um, Caldwell Banker, um, they, they, yeah, they they left NAR. They just assumed. And so did Remax. Yeah. Well, yeah, Remax is part of that brand. So are is that something EXP is looking oh, at? Do you know? If we're I'm not aware of that. However, okay. what I do know is that if you guys follow, you know, if well, here's what I do know. EXPRealty.com is one of the most, um, uh, is probably one of the best sites for MLS listings and stats. We have over 2 million listings on there coverage wise. Um, I don't know any other brokerage that has that, but I'm not, you know, I'm not quoting that. And what we're trying to do is with the my link my lead. If you if you're not involved in it, you might want to check out my link my lead because it allows you to advertise exprealty.com. You can create as many links as you want, and you get referral fees off those. So, I we we have not disassociated with NAR, but I feel because of the tools that EXP is offering its agents, we probably will be utilizing those tools more in driving exprealty.com to the number one spot organically as, as far as a search engine goes. So if anyone wants to- Interesting times. So, you know. so, but even if you leave NARA, it's gonna catch up to you. I mean, it's gonna, this law is gonna cover everyone. I just, I, I don't know what, does anyone know what the purpose of leaving NAR is for? Is it like money, saving money? So they're, I, I don't, does anyone understand why they're doing no. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, because if I'm a consumer and I'm sitting down with competition and I'm saying, yeah, well, you know, your realtor is not part of the National Association of Realtors, the widest coverage of MLSs in the United States or whatever. Don't you think that's pretty significant? Yep. Yeah. One thing that when I hear that they're doing this and coming from the legal field, an attorney can be part of like the St. Peter Clearwater Bar Association. But I believe, and I could be wrong, that they have to be a member of the Florida Bar Association. It, and they don't have to do the St. Pete Clearwater, but the Florida Bar is where they get sworn into. So uh, that's the way I would kind of look at NAR to begin with. And after all these years, like, uh, I never understood why the seller pays for both the buyers and the seller's realtor. Um, but however, it does give the buyer more uh, chance to pay, you know, to pay for their closing fees without paying the realtor. And we're all very grateful that, you know, the seller has paid for both of us, right? But I don't, I think it leaves it, and it, unless I'm misunderstanding it, I think it leaves it too open-ended for the buyer's agents to just not get paid. And we work way too hard 
I mean, the seller's agents work hard too, don't get me wrong. But for buyer's agents, we spend hours and days and months taking these people through hundreds of thousands of houses that, you know, there's a hair on the floor and they don't like it. I mean, and and what, where do we get compensated for our time, which is way more expensive than paying for uh, marketing um, as far as the house itself is concerned. So what would cover us for our hard work? Yeah. And as buyer's agent, I don't see that there's anything that would do that. The buyer's brokerage agreement that you're going to have your consumer, your customer sign before you put them in your car and show them homes. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it's like taking a listing agreement. Yeah. And currently the you way know, it's, and, the, and currently it, the way it's set up, go ahead. Ed, I'm sorry. You know, I'm part owner of a company called CBR certified buyer representative. It's out in New York. Okay. And I've, I've, I own a small fraction of it and we've been doing this for years. Okay. For the New York and Massachusetts it's really, you know, it's um, it's almost the standard up there. And I think that's what we're going to have to get a, kind of accustomed to doing down here in Florida and, and these other areas. And, but, it, you know, it's, they use it all the time. Now, I can't tell you that it's ironclad. You know, let's say they sign an agreement and then they go with another broker or something like that. I mean, you know, up in New York, it's dog eat dog, you know, up there. And they eat their young, you know, it's vicious. Yeah. So, but I do know that they, they're, it's, it's um, quite plausible, you know, to use that. And I think that's what we got to get accustomed to. And I, and I kind of agree with you, Karen. I, I mean, I'd like to be at that class on the 19th too, to be honest with you. Well, it's, yeah, I'll, I'll send we'll, it. We'll set it up in, in the, uh, in the office. And, you know, for those who, you know, have never looked at a buyer broker agreement, the current, the way it's set up right now is, and since, we are still being compensated from the listing agent. The buyer doesn't pay anything at this, the way it's set up now, okay? The buyer broker agreement protects you in case um, the listing agent commission is in the future not offered uh, to the buyer's agent or helps offset, they're offering X percent and, the, and you're asking for Y percent. So um, I think we really gotta be careful too, especially since we record these things. Yes. And I'm just very leery of putting this out there in social media, guys. So um, because we, we just got to be careful when we're talking about commissions and um, within our group, it's one thing because we're in the same all the same brokerage here. But when you get it out there in the public, I don't think we, not, we said anything incorrectly. Here, no, but, commissions are always negotiable. I mean, that's yeah, that's and, the bottom line. Exactly. Uh, right. And a buyer nev and buyer's agents never uh, a buyer never pays, never, I should say, we it's never tell our buyers that they we work for for free for them. That's not the case. Okay, we we work on their behalf and are currently compensated from the listing agent. All right. So um, and and I, I believe I posted that article. I was kind of perusing it a little. I believe that is the you know the the companies that left NAR after you know anywhere in in Remax and and Michelle. I apologize. I said Remax was was part of. Uh, anywhere, but it's not, they're separate. But uh, regardless, they're uh, giving their agents the option to opt out of NAR, which means I guess you don't have to belong to the, I mean, the board, I guess you don't have to belong to a board B because can you belong to a, a, a local board without belonging to NAR? I don't think the local board's going to allow that. I would think you'd have to be a, a, a member of the state board, but maybe not national. If you notice your, your board bill, your dues when you get it there's three bills on there nar far and local um, right yeah. so it'll be interesting i don't know i mean we just have to keep on top of the news and yep. um, stay informed okay so we got two marching orders today right sean and karen let's get a let's get a proper sentence together that we can put in our public remarks in the first line to include you you know using the seller's preferred lender of sean mcmanaman with ne do it whatever you have to do legally sean the proper verbiage and then once we get that, let's reach out to our sellers saying, hey, and I think a 3% number is a fairly good ballpark number, right, Sean? For Okay, so if it's a $500,000 listing, would you take 485 for your home? If that's the case, let's keep it listed at 500 and offer a three to one buy down, which would be about the same. 
So, um, and that's all negotiable. Once we get an offer in, then we let you run the numbers, for example, on it to see what their net would be, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, and then that's, um, we'll send out also the invitation for that um, buyer mm -hmm. broker agreement meeting in the world. If you can make it, great. If not, you can you know, make sure you you get on at home and watch it from there. Okay. Rose Bowman, congratulations on your first closing with EXP. Very proud of you, young lady. <laughs> nice. I just, um, you know, I was going to say that the closing I had this week, we did a three, two, one buy down. The listing was advertised that the seller would contribute 10,000 closing costs. And um, and so I checked with the, the listing agent and asked her if I could word it, um, that the 10,000 would be towards buying down the rate and or prepaids and or closing costs. And it worked out great. It was a $425,000 house and their mortgage payment the first year was like 1650. And then the second year was, I think about 1800. And then the third year, I guess, and then further on was 2000. But um, they got a brand new house, you know, for 1600 a month, which was pretty cool. Yeah, I um, think this could be huge for us guys. I really do. You know, we People, buyers want to buy, they just don't want to pay seven or 8% interest. So let's try to get it down to get more activity into our list, right? Yeah, Absolutely. the other thing is you got in this, in, let's say I call it the interim period. So you, if you do a three, two, one, it's three years. If you do a two, one, it's, so in this interim period, so the money at closing, okay, is set aside in an escrow account, all right, to be paying down, the mortgage rate so if you refinance during this interim period you get that money back right if you don't use it you get it back towards your refinance that's mm -hmm. why this becomes even a better deal because you can refinance any time in this interim period right and you can possibly get some of this money back to you towards that refinance Got it. Brilliant. Go you know, I talked to a couple other realtors and um, I explained, I told them that we were doing a buy down rate. And I always knew that, you know, the buyer can buy down their own rate, but I wasn't really aware that the seller could buy it down for them. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of realtors out there who have never heard of this. And I hadn't really heard about it either until this happened. And, um, so anyway, every realtor that I've talked to just, just this past week asked me about it. And I said, ask your lender about it. Um, I think it's a great, it's, it, it makes a big difference. Mm, I agree. Good. Anybody else? Last comments? No? Well, thank you all for joining us today. Looking forward to seeing you in person. Was that on, is on the 19th, that's Thursday. And we'll get that information out to you. Looking forward to seeing you, Sean and Karen at the office in a bit. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Enjoy the okay. beautiful day. Peace. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. Bye.